to go out into the world and know what you can expect and know that you're prepared to face darkness. Man, let's charge your batteries on your light while you're here so that when you get out there and your marriage is on the rocks and your children or your parents are losing their minds that you can say, thanks be to God, I know where my rock is and I'm standing on the truth of God's Word no matter what happens, no matter what wind blows, no matter how difficult it comes. We're, we're going to stand with the truth. And it's so the laws need to be so important to us. We're willing to give everything. I know it's tough to even say this, and I'm, I'm thinking how difficult it is even right now because they're in here. But, you know, we have kids, and we have five children, and all of you probably have kids, grandkids, and, and or either you're going to one day. And let me just kind of give you a biblical perspective of our children. They're not ours, man. They're God's. They're God's. And you know, God's given me five arrows in a quiver, and they know this is my heart for them. And I, I you know, I, I really do in my flesh. I hope they never move to Africa, all right? I don't really want that necessarily in my flesh. But here's what I want you to hear in my spirit. That they're not, they're, my hope for them is not that they do what I want them to do. Their hope, their hope needs to be in Jesus. And if Christ calls them to go into the most dangerous of places... Before God, we ought to pack their bags and drive them to the airport. You understand what I'm saying? Why? Because His glory is more important than our comfort and our satisfaction and our expectations, man. He's worth more than we are. And our everything is not enough to satisfy what He's given to us. How can we restrict what we give Him and say, Oh God, I'll, I'll do anything for you except... Let me draw the line, neat little line... Right here. This is where I'm comfortable. We talked about getting outside of our comfort zones. But, but listen, there's a reason why in the Old Testament, we talk, uh, they talk about the, the, the children uh, uh, in our lives are, are like arrows in a quiver, right? You're not supposed to keep them. You give them to God. You give them to God. And in the same way, look, everything in our life, it's, it's bent around the heart of God. And the heart of God for lost people is He loves them. He loves them. How much does God want us to love lost people? Only as much as He loved them. That's it. He loved them enough to give them Jesus on a cross. So how much are we to love the how much are we to love the drug addict in our community? Only as much as Jesus loves them. No more. Hey, don't even try to love them more than God. All right? How much are we supposed to love the adulterer? How much are we supposed to love the prostitute? How much are we supposed to love the alcoholic? How much are we supposed to love the person that's farthest away from God, the person that's so far that we don't think there's any way they'll come to Christ, only as much as God loved them. And God loved them enough to send His Son to die on a cross for their sins. That's all. He, he only expects everything. That's all God expects out of us, is everything we are for His, his glory. And, and man, I know that's, wow, that's confrontation. But let me just go ahead and give you this final thought, because this is so beautiful, how we see God speaking in this way. Unity of the church is a sign to the world that Jesus is who He said He is. See, if you think about look at verse 23 in 17. It says, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Why? Why should we be unified? Listen, then the world will know that you sent me. So Jesus literally said that the world, it will be evidence to the world that the Father sent the Son, that Jesus is who He said He is if we are unified as a church. That's a big deal. And it even testifies further. John 13, 35, listen to this. By this, all men will know that you're my disciples because you love one another. It cannot be overstated for various reasons. Practically speaking, unity is most important because we can't do anything if we're going different directions, right? As a body of believers. But even when we think about this theologically, man, this is so important. For the sake of the glory of God, for the sake of the glory of God, we have one mission. For the sake of the glory of God, it's not about preference, but it's about the purpose that God has for us. For the sake of the glory of God, it's not about worship style. I mean, we have three, but listen, even if you don't find one you like, you love Jesus, right? So worship Him. Uh, and I, you know, every, I started to say I have to. I get to, all right? I get to visit three cultures every Sunday morning. And you know, I, I know it's challenging, but there's times, let me just go and admit something real transparently. Sometimes in one of those three services... There may be a song that I don't really like a lot. You may say, did the preacher just say he didn't like a song in church, you know? But it may be stylistically different than I like. And I may not really dig it like from a, ooh, I love that song. But you know what? 
I love the one we're singing about, right? And since I'm in love with God, I have no choice. I, I can hate the tune. I, I can not like the beat. But you know what? I love the Jesus we're singing about. And so I, with joy and celebration, can't help myself but sing in a style that's not mine. And so again, it's not about us. It's about Him. And what a testimony to a community. What a testimony to the, the region, the upstate of South Carolina. If we as people from different backgrounds, we as people with different opinions and different preferences, man, where bikers and bankers can sit in the same room together only because, not because of, of, of anything other than the glory of God. 